The acting companies of Shakespeare's day were direct descendants of the strolling players, similar to those portrayed in Hamlet and The Taming of the Shrew. During the 14th and 15th centuries, solitary minstrels and travelling performers gradually formed themselves into small bands which toured the countryside. Eventually, several of these groups became attached to noble households. Noble patronage gave the performers, if not abundant financial assistance, at least professional standing and protection, as well as permanence as actors. A statute was finally passed in 1572 which made legal this long accepted practice of patronage. In 1574, a royal patent was granted to the company of the Earl of Leicester. Other popular acting troops of the day were those of the Lord Chamberlain, the Earl of Sussex and Lord Howard. Plays were performed in all kinds of places, churchyards, inn-yards, halls and great houses. The medieval inn, built on a standard pattern, was ideally suited for these dramatic productions. Rooms were grouped around four sides of a courtyard, and the chambers of the guests opened onto a gallery which looked down into the courtyard. There the players would erect their stage on trestles or barrels and give their show. They gathered money from the spectators in the yard, and the innkeeper took his share by collecting from his guests in the gallery. Because there was a population large enough to provide regular audiences, London became the natural home for the acting companies. Patterned after the inns in 1576 were builded two public houses for the acting and show of comedies, tragedies and histories for recreation, whereof the one is called the curtain, the other the theatre. On performance days, each playhouse advanceth his flag in the air, whither quickly at the waving thereof are summoned whole troops of men, women and children. 